This week are at um, Pastors Conference out at Moody, a uh, time of refreshment and growth for them. Please pray while they're up there. Um, that being said, if there's anybody who needs anything at all here at home, um, he is able to be reached, but you can also contact me or one of the elders who will be here to help you out if there's any need. So please keep us in mind and um, give us a call if you need anything. And the next one, Will is graduating from Boston Boston Baptist College this week. And yes, you will get another chance to see him before he goes into his full-time ministry next weekend, um, Sunday at 12:30. He, we will be having, or he will be having a cookout in his honor. It will be at um, Jeff and Robin Reynolds, and there is a clipboard going around. Um, just so that Patty has a good idea of how many people will be attending. If you could put your name down, if you're going to be attending, and how many you plan to bring with you. And if you know of a family who's not here today who will be attending, go ahead and put them down too. Um, and that's it. Let's get ready for our worship. Good morning, everyone. We're here to celebrate. Yeah. Celebrate our King, our Savior, our salvation, our eternal perspective. Do we have all that here in the house today? Yeah. yeah. Have a blessing. Let's sing to our God.
represents the Lord. Thank you, Father, for meeting us here, for being the best part of us as your Holy Spirit lives within us, making us whole, Father, the provisions you've made through your Son, our King, our Savior, Jesus. Thank you, Father, and forever we'll be able to praise you. In Jesus' name.
Father God, as we prepare now our tithes and offerings, giving back to you just such a small portion of what you do to us. Salvation, eternity with you, giving us these hearts, preparing the way, providing your word. Father, I don't know. I don't know where to speak. I, I cannot come up with the words that measure too much compared to what you give to us. Please accept these gifts, these returns back to you. And may you use them to expand your kingdom even outside these walls.
meet us here. Take the <coughs> worries of the rest of the day and the stuff that we've got to do later. Help us put that aside. Open up our eyes and ears and here to see what you have for us. Father God, thank you for this place for our brother Dean who's going to meet us in service today. Thank you for letting us do this. Sing praises and thanks to you. We worship you. We learn from your word. And learn as we heal your Holy Spirit. Servant 
2.0, the latest version. And uh, the way we're going to moving forward from this is that uh, I would present to you again that we as Christians are all God-purposed servants. We are all GPSs. So we are a GPS living our lives with purpose, serving the kingdom of God. The real question right now that I want to start with is what kind of GPS are you? And I don't mean what brand, whether you're a Garmin or a Nubi or a Tom Tom or whatever. But what kind of GPS are you? Or maybe what condition are you in? Are you a fully updated GPS with the latest upgrades, which provides excellent guidance? Or are you operating, but the software is a little out of date? Maybe you need uh, some other things to happen. But still, you know, occasionally gives a wrong direction or two. Or are you a GPS that uh, maybe your battery's dead, needs recharging? You're full of energy, <coughs> but need to get kind of plugged in. Or are you a GPS that's, that's broken, that's damaged, in need of repair, <coughs> inoperable, without that repair? Perhaps you need to call tech support. Good luck, depending on what you get for tech support. As a God purpose servant, you have the greatest tech support imaginable. Now, even the best GPS, even you know, the kind that you buy in the store, has a source for its information, right? The guidance the GPS receives comes from a higher power. You can see what I did there. <laughs> Way up on space, even, right? Now, we, likewise, as God purpose servants, get our guidance from a higher power as well. We get our guidance from the higher power. In order to be, I pose this, the best God-purposed servant that we can be, we must be obedient to the higher power, God. We must submit to Him and the teaching of His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Obedience is what we'll be talking about today, and kind of then working our way away from it, but still connected to it, and then back around to it by the end. Obedience. This can be a tough thing for many people. Most people. Maybe all people. Obedience. I could even share, actually, an example from this very weekend very recently in my life that actually speaks to this concept of obedience and how even with simple things sometimes we can be disobedient. This, 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 you'll get a hoot out of this, especially Lisa doesn't even know this this weekend. So, this is a little story. This weekend I was at a conference and a music festival at, 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 uh, for all state. And I was... Uh, headed down to the University of Southern Maine at Gorham for a few days, Thursday through Saturday, to uh, be a part of a number of conferences and things, but there's also some time that I have available. So I, I was making my way down Thursday morning. I took a, a student down to be a part of the festival. And as we made our way down there on Thursday, I, I was taking Cameron's car because I'd had it for a few days and it needed some stuff that uh, we did get done and still didn't get done, but I was going to exchange it with him once I get down there. So we drove down there, this student of mine, a wonderful uh, musician, and we just chatted all the way down and talked. And then we pulled up to the University of Maine and hundreds of students were there for the festival from around the state. Hundreds and buses and cars and everything's being dropped off and I'm driving around the University of Southern Maine how many of you have ever been on that Gorham campus? It's not a large campus. And, and so I was driving through and weaving through and been around a couple of times and trying to find a, a parking spot. So I finally, as I pulled up, I pulled up into this parking area and I noticed a parking meter in front of me. And I was like, oh, that's cool. We'll just, I've been around and I, I don't know, I'm just, just going to drop you off. And I'm going to run in and get you registered, and then I'm going to come out real quick, and we'll just we'll just go. Quick. It'll be all. Oh. Some of you are thinking like, I know this is where this is going. <laughs> so we, we we get out, we go to get his luggage and stuff, and his instrument stuff. We run in, you know, we get in there, and then there's a line and lots of people. Oh, and then there's people that I haven't seen like all year. How are you? Great. How is it? Oh, wonderful. And then pretty soon I'm like, oh, I'm right here registering Walter for this. 
I'll just walk over to this building and I'll get myself registered while I'm right here for my conference portion of the rest. And while I'm there, I see somebody that actually graduated with their doctorate last week in music and uh, from, from a, now that's taking over university position. And so we chatted for a long time. And I thought, oh, I, I probably... I guess I should get back now. I've got to get my uh, bag for my car because I didn't bring it all with me. Everything. So I make my way back. Doo, 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 you know, walking back, everything's cool, great. Then I'll check and register, yay, and all that stuff. And I walk up and I open up the car door and I get in and, and, then we and look through my windshield and there's a pink slip there. And I was like, oh, that's right. I was only going to be a second. So I get out, I get the slip, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, ah, and then I'm looking at the slip and everything, all the information, and, and it says, and, it, and, it, and it's on there, and I'm like, and it says, parking meter, $25. I'm like, oh, man, oh, this is wild. And I, so, so I'm like, one of my first things that I was going to do down there, I had a little bit of time before I, think I was going to meet with Cameron, have lunch, and... And uh, we're going to catch a movie, actually. And then I was going to go back and do my conference afternoon and evening stuff. So I called him up and said, yeah, I'm on my way. Guess what happened? I got a ticket. He goes, you did? Yeah, it was a parking meter. And uh, uh, yeah. so he goes, Let's just rip it up. I'm like, oh, what? He goes, no, no, no. The, the first one, you, is that your first one? Goes, yeah. He goes, well, the first one they just give you. You know, they... they you, they have, like give you one time allowance kind of thing to give you. He said, I had one earlier this year and I just nothing came of it. I just, you know, it says on the sheet, you know, first time, it's okay. So it's like, oh, phew, that's good. That's good news. So I'm like, drive, we go, have lunch, movie, some of you are already putting this together. <laughs> go movie, lunch, come back, I drop him off, we change vehicles. I get in the other vehicle, my car, he now has his, and I'm driving back, and I go, as I'm driving, Lisa's PT Cruiser, wait, that was Cameron's car that I had this morning, and he got a ticket earlier this year there, that's, I, oh, that's the same car, that's registered to me, in my name, this is the second time, that's $25, for a parking meter. Immediately, of course, you can picture my mind, I became very obedient. I was like, well, I will just go right there and pay them $25 and that's my responsibility. Are you kidding me? I said, oh man, what, what can I do? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, I could just explain to them the situation that, that there, were, there weren't many spaces and I just pulled up and uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just here for this conference for the weekend. I was just like, what could I tell them? Have you ever been there before? Maybe we were like speeding, like you were going this I was? <laughs> my mind even, you know, obedient, right? My mind even, even turned to lying. <sighs> Yeah, I was like, what? But what if, what if, what if I didn't see it? What if I didn't see that parking meter? Yeah, how about, or there were a lot of people and students, and luggage and stuff. What if theirs was like in front of it and and it must have been blocking it and I didn't see it? Anybody ever have those kinds of moments where you kind of go like, but maybe, you know? And so I was like, no. What hit me was this message that I prepared about obedience. It totally entered my mind because I was doing preparation for this during the week and then even as I was at the conference. And I said, oh God, oh God, oh, yes. So I went right to that public safety office the, the next morning, walked right in, handed them the slip. They said, oh, is this your first one? And I said, well, not my first one, but it's, it's well, yes, yes, my first one, but my son, who earlier had, he had it too. I still was trying. I was like, trying to explain it. I was like, no. So, and he goes, like, looks it up, do, 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 comes back, yeah, that's the second one, that's $25. Like, not even like, well, I just, like, I said, okay, 
<laughs> hand it, you know, hand it in the car, eat rich, great, go, great, go, great, great, thank you, thank you very much, have a good day. And I walk out, and I was like, oh, obedience. If only, I was thinking for a moment, I thought, if only, if only, if only Cameron hadn't got a ticket earlier in the year. <laughs> I did. I had that thought for a moment. Even still, I was like, there was a part of me that's like, God, Cameron. <laughs> and then, just as quickly as that thought came, that I believe the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, uh uh, this is on you. This is yours. <laughs> own it. So I owned it at a $25 parking space for about, actually, that was about a dollar a minute. <laughs> When you say it that way, it's not so bad. Only a, it's like those ads, only a dollar a month kind of thing. So, you know, only a dollar a day, only a, only a dollar a minute. It's still $25 to park a car for 25 minutes. So that was on me, that obedience, that lack of obedience, my disobedience. With that simple thing, the parking meter, it costs me. Our disobedience costs us every time. Every time. How much are you willing to pay to act disobediently? There is a cost. If we knew the cost up front, would it make a difference? It would have made a difference for me. If there had been a sign right next to that saying, sure you can park here in front of this parking meter, but if we come back and you're not, and it's still here, I mean, you will pay $25. I would have gone like, oh, let's keep going. Even if we have to walk half a mile, that's fine, we'll walk. But there wasn't that. And yet it was inherently. I knew, you've all parked, well, not all of you, many of you parked at parking meters and thought the same thing about parking. Oh, and thought, you know, no big deal. But it was, there was a cost to that. <laughs> what about something more significant than a parking meter? Let's say salvation. Let's say, living a God-honoring life, there is a cost for disobedience. However, let's keep looking at things from the positive aspects. Obedience is what God is looking for from us. Our Heavenly Father, our Father in Heaven, is looking for obedience from us. That made me think of our Father in Heaven. Do you know that feeling you get when you do something that makes your parents happy, that brings them joy. That feeling of, <clears throat> that understanding that says, I want to please my dad, or I want to please my mom. I want him or her to feel joy in what I am about to do. That's a, that's a really cool feeling. That's a great feeling. That, that understanding. That's, that's neat whether you're 6 or 46. That feeling that you get when you bring that to a parent. Or how about parents? That joy that you feel when a child does something that pleases you. And I'm, and I'm not even talking about a feeling of pride. It's more about a feeling that when you recognize your child um, gets it. That's a cool thing. That's a great thing. That's much different than pride. That's even... I think it was, uh, Patty was here, and we were talking, is she in the ministry now? Yeah. We were talking about Will yesterday at the anniversary party, and I could get the sense that she was looking at Will and thinking, ah, he gets it. It wasn't, she wasn't really pride that she was feeling, and that still may be there, but that sense that, wow, in talking with him, he gets it. That is the place that we need to get to in our relationship with God. When we are obedient to Him, we will not only be blessed, but we will understand more clearly the instructions and path for our daily living. Our direction will be more clear. And as a God-purposed servant, a GPS, we will be ready with the latest updates and information. Here are a few scripture references that, and there are many, Scripture references that deal with obedience. Deuteronomy 5.33 Walk 
in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Psalm 128, 1. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. 2 John 1, 6. And this is love. That we walk in obedience to His commands. As you have heard from the beginning, His command is that you walk in love. It was interesting, and I didn't even notice it until this morning when I was reviewing my notes again and again. That in each of those passages, walk was there. And what stood up to me is that that symbolizes or implies a daily commitment to being obedient to God. A daily commitment. I would even submit to you a constant commitment. How is this kind of obedience possible? How is this? I mean, that's... When I think about the parking meter thing, that kind of simple thing. How many instances occur in our week that goes by where obedience is really the question? Really what's in the question? So how is this kind of obedience that, that possible? Well, we're going to find out in a few seconds. We're going to talk about that. But we've got to do a little exercise here first. So we're all going to, we're all going to kind of cooperate. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to put this down in a second. So... Uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask everyone to close your eyes, okay, in a moment. So this is really important to the exercise and where this is going, so everyone needs to participate. So um, so if you're like, no, I don't know. So yeah, I, need, I need everyone to close your eyes. Even if you're watching this later on the, on the line, and you're just watching, you're going to be watching this now, because you're watching it online right now, when you watch it. Okay. Uh, close your eyes, okay? So ready, everyone, close your eyes now, Okay. With your eyes closed, what I would like you to do is take your right hand and hold it out in front of you, palms down. So your palms down. Just your right hand. Very good. Thank you. Uh, palms down. Not up in the air. Okay. Keep your eyes closed. I saw that. Somebody's cheating. Okay. Now with your left hand, I want you to do the same thing. Hold it out in front of you. Palms down. Very good. We're, we're, we're almost done. We're getting there. That's cool. Don't move. Don't move. Alright, that's looking good. Great. Good. Now, open your eyes. Okay, you can stop. Put your hands down. That's pretty easy, wasn't it? That was really simple. You followed a very few simple steps uh, without much of any hesitation. By the way, thank you very much. In my mind, I picture it somebody being like, no, not doing it. But you guys all did it. It was great. You were obedient. Why? You trusted me. Kind of. Did you have reason or cause not to trust me? Had I done anything to cause you to mistrust me? No. So this exercise, it, it did what we needed to do. So we're going to do it again. Ready? But don't close your eyes yet. Just a second. So we're going to do it again. So, um, okay. What I'd like you to do... Just a second. Alright, here we go. Close your eyes! Now! Close them. Now. Now. Close your eyes. Many of you aren't closing your eyes. I'm not impressed. Close your eyes now. I'm not going to hurt you. Close your eyes. Hold out your right hand. Hold it out. Palms down. Knuckles up. Hold out that left hand. Do the same thing. Same thing. Do it. Do it. Everything's going to be fine. Okay, you can open your eyes. You know, that's okay. Alright, so interesting illustration. Um, what happened? Did you trust me? Yes. I mean, for the illustration, what, what happened was, your view of me changed. I had changed. Circumstances do usually influence whether or not we trust in someone or something. If someone buys a certain brand, perhaps you've done this and it didn't really have the success with it that you wanted it to, then you tend not to trust it. 
How about this one? You eat somewhere and later on you get sick and you're like, I'm never going back there again. Even if it wasn't the food there that made you sick, but you tend not to trust it. Or if someone stands in front of you with a hammer and tells you to close your eyes, you don't trust them so much. So circumstances do, do impact that. Trust is absolutely critical. You are, you are less willing to be obedient, for sure. For certain. Trust is critical to being obedient. The connection is unmistakable. We can see it in our relationships every day. I will find it difficult to be obedient to my employer if I don't trust them. Anybody ever experienced that? And then you don't, I don't mean such things. I will find it difficult to be obedient to my spouse if I do not trust them. I will find it difficult to be obedient to my parent if I do not trust them. And I will find it difficult to be obedient to the authorities if I do not trust them. It's not an excuse. It's just the reality. So we can carry it one, further, one step further, set up on this plane. How about in this direction? I will find it difficult to be obedient to God if I do not trust Him. We are not the first ones to struggle with this idea of trusting God. In John 6, this is a very interesting passage through the chapter of John. And later on, it's a long chapter. And later on in John, Jesus is speaking to His disciples, His followers, not the, just the twelve that He's chosen, but He had many followers at this point. Many. And He's going through, He's talking to them, and, and I'm going to start at verse 43 in John 6. And He says, at this point, He's said some things to them, and they're kind of like, what? And they're kind of like, what? I don't know, what? And they're like, what? And he says, stop grumbling among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. And I will raise them up in the last day. It is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from Him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here, here, is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews, many of his followers and disciples there, these are people that had been following him for a while began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Duh. They totally didn't get it. They missed it. Their confusion and lack of trust in that moment led many of the disciples, many of the followers of Jesus, to actually turn away from them. It says in Scripture, they turned, they left, they went away. Here's what's really cool. Jesus, at this point, turns to His twelve disciples that He chose. And He says to them, basically, this is what He says, You do not want to leave too, do you? He basically turned to them and said, What about you? What, what are you going to do? Are you going to leave too? And the twelve, Simon Peter, answered him, Lord, uh, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. These twelve disciples trusted Jesus Christ. Why did they trust Him? We talked about trust being absolutely critical to being obedient. How is it that you come to trust Him? They had spent day after day for a period of around three years with Christ. They had developed a relationship with Him that made this possible. They had witnessed Jesus' repeated actions and evidence of truth and love. How do you come to trust someone? Repeated actions and evidence of truth and love make this possible. It is carried out in everyday interactions. God has provided us with scores, scores of accounts of this from His Word. And He has provided evidence for how we can trust Him, not only in Scripture, 
but from the very lives of the people around us. Think back to earlier, just a few moments ago, how your trust of me changed when I had the hammer in my hand and I shouted at you. Your view of me changed. The question I would pose now is what is your view of God? Is He sitting before you? Arms outstretched, blameless, pure, holy, loving, compassionate, honest, and just. Or, is your view of a God who has a hammer in his hand, ruthless, uncaring, blind, just waiting? Ooh, I don't want to damage the floor. What can I hit that I'm to put the hammer down. You do know that that's some people's view of God. Maybe even that your view sometimes. Is it possible for a Christian to have a view of God like that? We could certainly remember we are human. Circumstances can influence our opinions. Situations can affect us. But let me make it clear. While our perception of God can change, God never changes. We can trust Jesus Christ because He never changes. His character never changes. His word, you've got the theme, what is it? Never changes. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and when? Forever. His truth is, or his trust can be found through his repeated actions and evidence of truth and love. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, that whoever believes in him, but have. 1 John 4, 9. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent the, His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you. Whew. Thank you, God. <laughs> not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Does that sound like a God who's standing there going? <laughs> he doesn't want anyone to perish. Who's that on? Ah, thank you. Who was that they said that? Us. Who was that? I didn't get a chocolate just for saying that. That's great. I was going to There you go. If you don't like chocolate, you can just So, it's on us. It's on us. Us. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. What's your view of God been lately? Has it been of a God who... Loves you and cares for you? Or are your circumstances causing you to think, God doesn't hear me? God doesn't see me. I'll say it again. While our perception of God can change, it does, we're human, He never changes. Trust in Him. Do you want to be obedient to God in order to best understand His purpose and plan for your life on this earth? Then you need to start by trusting Him. That first part, does that sound like a pretty cool thing? Understanding your purpose and plan in this life? That, I mean, as I wrote that, I was like, that's cool. I'd like to know that. That's really cool. I think I know it some days, but then there's other days when I'm like not 
uh, paying parking meters like I'm supposed to, that I kind of get like a little sidetracked. Do you want to trust God then in order to be obedient? You're going to want to know that Jesus Christ is someone. No. He is the one you can trust above all others. He never fails. You will find all the evidence you need of this. His repeated actions of truth and love contained in the Word of God. And moreover, you can find all of the evidence and witnessed in the lives of the people that trusted on a daily basis. How about, I don't know, maybe even this week, someone that you know, that you that came alongside and just said something, and it, and it had influence on you, that you kind of went, wow, I needed that. That's, that's evidence of Jesus in their life, and then having influence on you in your life. Do you want to be a God-purpose servant? A GPS that is fully functional? We started out talking about those GPSs. What kind of GPS are you? Are, are you fully operated and loaded up with the latest updates and you're like, man, I'm going to this right on target? Are you a little out of date and need some updates? Are you, is your battery dead? Does it need to be recharged? Or are you damaged, broken. And it's, you, you, you need more than just a recharging. You need to get plugged in to the Word of God. You will come away fully charged, fully updated, fully functional, and ready to guide a lost world to a relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. About, uh, uh, it's been about five and a half, six weeks, I started a daily reading plan. Prior to that, I read God's Word when I had time. You can be honest, or you don't have to be honest. But before that, how many of us, I was one of, one of us, that read God's Word when I had time? How many of you are pretty busy? How many of you are pretty active? A lot of you. I mean, I, I know you're, you're active. You have a lot going on. Absolutely. Most people do. And, and I am. And I would... Relegate it to my free time. What do you like to do in your free time? I do like sleep. <laughs> it's good. And I eat occasionally when I have time. But I didn't really make the time for reading God's Word. And I, can be, I honestly can think back to, as a young adult, leading in another church as a deacon, and attempting and, and working with the pastor, and, and like, well, when do you read God's Word? I'm like, yeah, I'm reading, you know, I, I find time, sometime, I find time. But it was not consistent. And I have to tell you, every morning, and Lisa can attest to it. I don't do it in front of her so she can, like, vouch for me. <laughs> Although that's not a bad No, so, um, every morning, the first thing I do is I get up, and I open up my iPad, and I read. At first, do you know how much of an effort it took to open up my iPad and not click on my email first? Knowing that I was going to go read the Bible. I was like, okay, over here, this app. Not my email. And not Facebook. The first thing I do is I go to that app, Bible Gateway, form, reading plan. And you know what else I do? When I finish my reading plan that day, I forward it to the next day's reading plan. So that it's already in my mind that I'm going to read the next day. And, you know what was really interesting as I was at that conference this week? I actually found myself at about Friday midday 
I was like, oh, man, wait, did I, did I read this morning? Did I do, I can't, and I actually went to it and like opened it up. It was, but it wasn't a feeling like, I must read God. You will read your Bible. It wasn't that. It was a desire to want to read it because I was experiencing more clearly the path that he had for me. Why did God, <laughs> this is funny, I'm laughing and crying at the same time. Why did God make me so emotional? I don't know. Um, so, but it's, that's hitting me now. Perhaps I should have thought of it for longer before him. But it's just hitting me now. That if I really want to know who God is, oh, sorry, I'm snoring and everything. <laughs> I, I need to take the time. I have to have a desire. Not doing so is disobedient. But I don't do it because I, I, I have to obey. I do it because I want to. You want to be obedient to God. You've got to trust Him. See Jesus Christ in His word, in the people around you. Little things like Lydia posts every day and those just get sent on Facebook. I just read day number whatever in my daily planner kind of thing. That's encouraging. You probably, I don't, did you know that? It's, it, it happens. You might use it as an encouragement for you. It encourages me when I see those things. We can see Christ's evidence in everything we do if we're open with our eyes. <laughs> You want to be a God-purpose servant? You want to know what you're here for? Trust Christ. Trust God. Be obedient to Him. Pay your parking tickets and parking meters. Put the money in there. It'll save you in the long run. You can use that as a metaphor for anything if you like. <laughs> Let's stand as we pray for those of you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You. Thank You that You Equip us in a way, Lord, that we understand that we need something more than ourselves. We need someone more than our spouse, our children, boyfriends, girlfriends, acquaintances, friends. We need you. Help. I, I just pray, Lord, that we would be willing to trust you and discover the, the life you have for us when we are obedient to you. You have equipped us, you will continue to equip us to be those fully functional GPSs that you want us to be and draw close to you. I thank you for this and the blessings for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Have a wonderful afternoon. The sun is sort of shining. And uh, rain is on its way tomorrow.